Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the products of nucleophilic substitution of haloalkanes with ammonia and with cyanide ions. And this is for the AQA and EDXL specs only. If you're following the AQA spec, then you need to be able to describe the mechanisms for these reactions. And if you're following the EDXL spec, then you need to be able to describe the mechanism for the reaction with ammonia only. In the last few videos, we've been looking at nucleophilic substitution in haloalkanes. We saw that hydrolysis is an example of nucleophilic substitution, with the hydroxide ion acting as a nucleophile. And if you haven't seen that video, then I'd recommend that you watch it. In this video, we're looking at the nucleophiles ammonia and the cyanide ion. Let's start with ammonia. I'm showing you here the reaction between ammonia and 1-bromopropane. This reaction takes place in two stages. In ammonia, the nitrogen atom has a lone pair of electrons, so ammonia can act as a nucleophile. The lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom is attracted to the positively charged carbon atom in the haloalkane. The nitrogen atom donates the lone pair of electrons to form a covalent bond to the carbon atom. Now a carbon atom can have a maximum of four bonds, so the covalent bond between the carbon atom and the bromine atom breaks. This is heterolytic fission, with both electrons moving on to the halogen. At the end of stage one, we have a molecule with a positively charged nitrogen atom. We also have a bromide ion. Now, a second molecule of ammonia removes an H plus ion from the nitrogen atom. The covalent bond between the hydrogen and nitrogen breaks, with both electrons moving on to the nitrogen. At the end of this stage, we've made the product 1-aminopropane, which is a primary amine. We're going to be looking at amines in much more detail in a later topic. We've also made the ammonium ion NH4+. The ammonium ion and bromide ion form ammonium bromide. Now to carry out this reaction, we warm our haloalkane with a concentrated ammonia solution in ethanol. This reaction is carried out in a sealed tube. This increases the pressure of the reaction and prevents the ammonia escaping as a gas. Also, it's important that we use an excess of ammonia. As you can see, in the product amine, the nitrogen atom still has a lone pair of electrons, so this can also act as a nucleophile, reacting with any unreacted haloalkane. By using an excess of ammonia, we make it more likely that a haloalkane reacts with ammonia rather than with our product amine. Okay, now another nucleophile that we can react with haloalkanes is the cyanide ion. If you're following the EDXL spec, then you need to know this reaction, but not the mechanism. Whereas AQA students also need to know the mechanism. I'm showing you here the reaction between 1-bromopropane and the cyanide ion. In this reaction, we mix the haloalkane with ethanol and an aqueous solution of potassium cyanide. We then heat this under reflux. The compound we form is called a nitrile, in this case butane nitrile. And you'll notice that we name the nitrile based on the new carbon chain, not the original haloalkane. This reaction is extremely useful because it allows us to increase the length of the carbon chain. Let's take a look at the mechanism. The cyanide ion has a lone pair of electrons on the carbon atom. This lone pair of electrons is attracted to the positively charged carbon atom on the haloalkane. The lone pair of electrons now forms a covalent bond. Now a carbon atom can have a maximum of four bonds, so the covalent bond between the carbon atom and the bromine atom breaks. This is heterolytic fission, with both electrons moving on to the halogen. At the end, we've produced our nitrile molecule plus a bromide ion. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe how haloalkanes react with ammonia and with cyanide ions. Okay.